Details, details. So the front rotors came to me, um, you know, all assembled. They were specially made for this particular car. And these were obviously raw, and then the top hats were made and they were coated. And what I've done is I've just painted those. So they were a, just a black anodized. And I've masked those up. So the idea here is I, I don't want to change the surfaces that mount the wheel uh, or the hub onto the, and then where the wheel mounts on the front. So I've masked those areas off and I'm looking to be able to put that on so that the bolting surfaces are all correct. And then I've changed the bolts from a normal Allen key to a dome head, but I've needed, I need to use my, like a steel bolt, a high tensile bolt rather than a stainless because um, the ABS sensor picks up on those bolts and nuts to operate. So what we end up with once I strip that off, um, so what I've used is just normal masking tape obviously, but then I've used fine line to run around where I could see where the, the actual brake rotor runs. So the rotor runs against the pad, I should say. And then I'm just having a little experiment at the moment, whether I run a little bit of silver in some of the things like this. So until this gets hot, these high temp paints, you can normally wash it out pretty easily with a bit of thinners. But I'm thinking I'll probably run that like that. And what I've used on this is just a VHT flame proof, so high temp paint and it's called cast iron. And I really like this because it makes everything look like it's an original rotor, but it won't rust. So um, we just treat this surface where the pad runs with um, deoxidine, that'll stop it rusting for the show. Obviously once they've been used, that'll wear off and then they will rust if they get wet. And what we end up with is when we look at this one, we end up with this style of look here. So the wheel will actually come out and cover this face when it's on the car and then I've just got that nice cast iron look um, and I've painted the bolts as well. So we'll get those back together, uh, obviously paint it all in here as well. So it just cleans it up, gives it a nice, um, a nice look and I think when you look through the wheel now it'll be more consistent and look better. One of them little fun jobs you've got to do, so I showed you before where the paint had been sort of toasted by the exhaust. So what I've done is I've chipped off the bits that were needed to come off, sanded it up, put some epoxy on it, and then this morning I've just put some light filler on. And now I've just put some trace coat and I'm rubbing that out, so I'll get it all nice and smooth. Then we'll go back through the process and we'll do epoxy, put some primer on it, and then we go colour, and then I'll use the, the satin clear again. And I've got a couple of edges I can work to, but primarily I'm going to have to blend it a little bit as well. So. One of those fun jobs, but it's got to get done. Righto, so I've made some pretty good progress. So I've managed to do that stone garden all up in there and do the repairs. And what I've done now, this is a soft mask, so the tape's turned back on itself so that you get a little bit of blow by. And what I'm gonna do now is put some color on that section because the stone guard's like a black and I need the gray. And then once I put that on, then I'm gonna clear down to my next lot of mask. Um, and then I'll put a bleeding um, thinner over the top of that. So that's that one. This one here is the same, so there was a piece missing from a from jack or something there, so I've filled that, and what I'll do now is the same there, so I've got a soft mask all the way around from a primer. I'll pull that off, sand the outer edge of that, um, and then I'll paint and clear out to an edge. So that's that one. The major one up in here, I'll do in about three stages, so it's ready now for some primer. So I've got a soft mask here to the perimeter of the repair. I'll prime it. Once I've got it primed, I'll let it dry, sand it back out to the next line, which is going to be the colour. I'll 
paint the colour out to the next edge of the panel and then I'll clear it and then do the bleed again. So each time I'll just go a little bit wider. Obviously not so critical under there but I still like to get it nice. And then this one here, I just need a little bit of primer on a couple of repairs there so I've just masked that back so that I can just blow a little bit of primer through here and I'll rub the edges again and then the rest of that I'll do I've got a soft mask around this edge. I'll colour the whole lot probably um, and then clear it because there's a few pinholes and things I've fixed up as well. So I'll just get a nice even coat of colour and then my satin clear. And then I've got the other side to do as well, but um, I'm really just doing that one to make sure it matches. You can probably see there a couple of marks. They were a couple of rub throughs that we had right from day one and that occurred between the coats of clear and we didn't realise until after it was re-cleared and then we seen it so it was too late. So it's always been there so I'm just going to fix those few things. It's been a lot of messing about but um, I'm at a stage now where I'm out here on my own on Saturday morning. I'm just going to get that primer on so I can put some colour on it tomorrow when nobody's around. Right, so that's the first coat of primer. So this is like a wet on wet, quite thin primer. I've used a slow thinner on it so that it'll lay down. Well, I'm glad that job's out of the way. So. The old neck's a bit sore from working upside down, but I've unmasked that. Started unmasking this morning and really happy with the way that's come out. I ended up using a aerosol um, bleed thinner, I think the term is. I'll grab it in a second to make sure I got rid of the dry edges. So I'll go around now and strip the rest of that off but so that thin, thinner is this one. So because we're doing a matte um, finish, my concern was getting, not having a dry edge. So I had sort of double masking. So I'd mask to here and then back here so I could actually pull it off and spray along this edge with that, um, that thinner in the aerosol and it's come out really good so I'm happy with that. And now we can get all that off and get on with the cleaning and tidying up. So the rear end's pretty much done. So I'll get back on the front now and start fixing up some of the things, the polish, brush touches, those sorts of things. Because we've only got um, four weeks to go and I've got to get it the car down on its wheels and get um, working on the polishing and interior. Just needs a good detail with the loose ends here and there and um, make it the best we can. Thought I'd better do a, oh, it's the ghost again. The printer. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd um, just go through a few of the little things we're doing on the Boss XC because it's been a week or two since we've had the camera out. Now. The process I keep talking about is fine tuning. So originally we had this powered by Ford um, stuck in here, but unfortunately we couldn't get one the right size, but it was put on there and it sort of looked good, but it was sort of half done. And what Peter, the owner has been able to find is someone to actually make one of those for us in the correct size. And it's a little bit duller, which I quite like, but part of the reason for that is it's been made out of a product that will actually handle the heat, so it should last. So that's one of those little things that we've just been playing with. Um, Steve's got one of the good jobs. He's been um, cleaning the wheels up. So this had been to the track to do the engineering testing and all. So of course the tyres get full of rubber. So we're trying to make the tyres look new. So when it's on the stand, it looks like it's never been driven. Um, 
And then of course, when everybody gets to the show, they go, oh yeah, typical show car, never been driven. So if you watch the video when you get there, there'll be a video showing it. Now, this one's a really interesting one. These are the spotlights. Now, originally I bought some new old stock um, from Heller, that someone had advertised them. So they're actually from the proper German Heller lights, but over the period of 18 months, they'd got that frosty look on them. Now, normally I pulled it apart because this lens is normally separate, but it's actually glued on. So I've taken the little clip out of the back that holds the light and then made a screwdriver up so I could get in there and actually clean the inside of the lens. And that's the difference. So one's that got that milky look about it. Um, because as soon as the car turned up here, I went, oh, something's happened with them lights. So once again, five minute job turns into a longer job. Um, the other things going on, the master cylinder on this car, so the booster and master cylinder are stock FG so that it all works properly, but it's a little bit, um, a little bit too original looking for this car. So I've actually bought a cover, you know, off eBay or somewhere, and it was welded. So I'm just sanding that down and then we'll finish that up and polish it. And if I'm not happy with the polish look, then I can always paint it. But that'll be another little job that we've got halfway through. Um, all of these parts <coughs> that I've got out here now, with the bumper bars, the rear especially, um, this rear bumper was never finished, was painted black, but it wasn't to a really high standard. So I give it a sand yesterday, and I've used that Del Fleet um, wet on wet primer with a satin black, and I've opted to leave it all together. So all the bolts and all are now painted and it looks very consistent and clean looking, remembering this bumper's been cut and shut and filled. So I've done that, and then of course we've taken the front bumper off to get to the grill today. And then I look at it and go, well now I'm gonna to need to do it. So I've just started masking it up, because what I'm gonna do now is this one has got the bolts and all done a little bit like how we do on a resto. But with this car, being an elite car now, um, I'm looking now to actually sand all this back. It'll take me an hour or two. I'll wet on wet it with those Delfleet products and that'll give me the matching bumpers front and rear. Now, you do that and then the next thing I'll look at is the front spoiler, which most people don't seem to like, but I do, so that's all right, and so does the owner. It's fiberglass and we made a lot of that here and once again, it was nice and shiny on the outside, but all of this stuff in here, I've pretty much made up my mind today that I'm gonna get in there and give that a bit more of a sand and put some filler in and get it up so it matches the inside of the bumper. Um, so that's most of the things I've got going on and we'll just keep progressing and keep you up to date as we do it. Righto, so there's our finished result. So the plan here and the aim was to, to get rid of the vision of having the bolts in here um, that I had sort of looking more like a resto. So I've been able to do that wet on wet. So I've rubbed it all down with 400. Um, it's all those things where it's probably, you know, it would have two or three hours to actually get it to this point where it's ready to go. And then because it's off, I've given it a polish now the car had been to a detailer up in Brisbane and they'd put some wax on it. So I'm not a real fan of waxes on a show car. So I've prep sold that off and then I've used um, the two lighter products in the Merca range. So I've used the black Polar Shine in a 12 and then gone to number five, which is our finish. Um, and I've done that just using the black pad on these little fellas, which has been good. Um, it's just the Merca black pad, the soft pad, and use the direct drive on the first one, and then somewhere around here will be the other one, which we actually oscillate. So we've got our gloss right back up again now, so it's ready to go on, and um, it's a bit of a three-man job to make sure we don't chip anything, and we'll redo our alignment to make sure everything's right. So we talked about the grill. Um, it's all back in now. We've done a little bit of adjustment with that for fitment as well. 
and once this goes on, I think the front will look just that little bit better, another couple of percent. Bit of groan in there, mate. What's going on? Just like that. Nothing to it. So what we'll do now is we'll mess around with our alignment. Um, there's not a lot we can do sideways, but a little bit, and then up and down, and try and get as much as we can to be square and looking nice. A little bit of progress, so a few small items to, um, to paint with some of the, the engine bay grey. So those covers were made out of fiberglass and the glass had shrunk back, so they're 18 months old now, so I've just blocked them out and I've got some um, primer on there in the grey. So the engine mounts, they were modified, so I've been able to grind them up and sand them and fill them and just the dipstick and then the steering column had it goes through the, the pipes and you would have seen that I've got the pipes off it so that centre section just got some scratches on it so I'm just going to um, do those so I'll put a couple of coats of the colour on them and then I'll put um, two coats of the satin clear which is part one half satin one half semi-gloss, which gives us that nice matte finish that we use. Righto, so that's got two full coats and a duster coat. So I've activated that base coat, so it's just base coat with some hardener. Just gives it a little bit better adhesion. And I'll give it a 15 minute flash off, and then I will put a two coats of the, the satin clear on it. Well, sometimes you do things and it doesn't quite work how you want. So I showed you this prior to putting the clear on. And you'll see here now, there's a couple of spots in this one where I've got a little bit of rubbish in it. And I mean, that's part and parcel of um, doing paint, especially if you're doing it like I am at home. Um, so I'll now need to give that a little 800, get rid of the marks out of it, and I'll just put one more coat on it. This one's come out really nice. Um, so I probably won't need to do that one. And then the engine mounts and all come out pretty good as well. So they're obviously tucked up under the car pretty well and you know, you've got nuts and washers and things on them. But um, pretty happy with they, the way they came up. And the same with the steering arm. So no dramas with those. So I'll get them unmasked and we can start looking at getting that back on. Um, I picked up the exhaust as well. Um, can't remember what day that was now, but I picked that up, so we'll have a quick look at that as well. Righto, so I talked about these and the fact that um, I wasn't happy with the colour that they'd been redone in, so we made some repairs. These we didn't have to do too much, but I wasn't happy with the way the edge was finished before, and now it looks pretty good. And you can see there, this has gone um, quite gold now, and that's because they put this coating on, the ceramic coating, and then they bake it. And the heat from the baking was turned that gold, so we'll need to polish that now. So that's got a nice look and finish to it. So that's the whole thing. Um, so all of those parts there. So I can, I've got pretty much everything I need now, I think. I've got new gaskets to go on the headers and actually Adam at Perry's just cut me some gaskets for here. So I got Adam to make the shape of those up for me like I designed it and then they water jetted it. So he's just making me some gaskets. So I should have them in the next day or so so I can get that back on. So we're getting to that point now where we're getting things finished and we'll start to look to get assembly and get the thing back together. One of the last things to do on the body was we had a few tire touches um, on the blue. So I've done all the gray on the underside. Now I'm just doing those. So I've pretty much masked the whole car off again, or I have masked the whole car off. And what I've done now is I've repaired um, where the damage was and I've 
if I need to, I've filled it and then I've epoxied and I've just put some primer on. Now I'm gonna blow some color on there and then I'm gonna do a soft mask out to this outside edge so that we can actually clear just to that edge there, then I'll just polish it out. Now I often talk about these different maskings. So when I talk about a soft mask, what I'm gonna do is just get some tape and roll it over like that. So you end up with the tape back on itself. And the idea there is, is when I put that on, so I'll take this bit off. When I'm looking to get my clear out to this edge, I'll just mask that like that. And what that does, when I spray here, the clear will just go under the tape a bit. So you end up with a soft edge, whereas if I masked it up and then cleared it, I'd actually have a finished edge. So this way it gives me a softer edge on the clear. That way I can then sand that out. Um, normally with some 800, then some 1200, then some 3000 and then polish that edge up. So hopefully you won't see where I've been. And um, now that I've shown you where I've been, I guess you'll be looking for it. Well, sometimes you get lucky. So I've been going on about this and the amount of work to mask up and do all the stuff to do some little, basically scratches you can't see. Um, I've been lucky enough that it's come out really good. So you can see there now, after that soft mask, I've pulled all that back off now. So the color's good. And obviously we had color left over. And then what I've done, where we've sort of gone with that soft mask, I've pulled that back off and I've used this product. So once you get that final coat of clear on, you can run that around, just aerosol. It's just a thinner, but it blends that sop, that edge where you've, um, the edge where you've finished. And you can see here, probably better on this one. So we had a mark through here. So I've colored that and then I've recolored all the way to the bottom. So I didn't have to try and blend it in. Done my soft mask with the clear. And now it's looking pretty, really happy with the way that's come out. Right, so this is another one of those little things that you, you did. And when you did it, you sort of went, oh, I probably should change that, but I didn't. You can see here, this goes on the boot lid, so it sits like that. And when the boots open at the show, I've painted the black. And you can see here these little bits and pieces. When I've actually taken the fine line tape off, I've either left it, I've either, I've probably left it not long enough. And I find with fine line, you either got to pull it off when it's wet or you got to take it off when it's totally dry. So it's just taken a few little bits out. And the problem is being black against the, the stainless, my eye gets drawn to those sorts of things. So when you're looking at this level of car, at something like Motor X and Superstars, it's really not good enough. So I'm going to probably paint strip that off and remask it and paint it again. Right, so that winds us up for this week. Um, two weeks to go. Really getting down to the fine tuning now, so you can see the front's back in it. Looks way better. The lights, I don't know what happened there. They just had that sort of foggy look about them. Polished everything. Engine's just about finished, so we've been working away polishing that all together, which is quite difficult. The new badges are really happy with the way they've come up and working through all the little things that make up what I do with show cars. Just making sure all the bolts are right. Everything looks where it's meant to be. And I think the whole car's starting to get that real sharp look about it. So two weeks to go. I reckon we'll squeeze one more episode in, uh, which will go to air while Dale and I are heading down um, the film so we can bring you all the Motor X uh, what in three weeks time?